Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. Before we get started, I wanted to give a big thank you to everyone who watched my bedroom makeover and left me so much love. If you guys can't already tell, the background is a little bit different. I'm super in love with it and if you guys missed it, make sure that you watch it after this video. So for this video, it is time for another Urban Outfitters DIY dupes. And the projects in today's video is really inspired by you guys because you guys send me requests all the time so I kept them in mind as I was picking out the projects for this video and that just makes it so much more special because you guys send me the best ideas and obviously we we're going to try to make these items for cheaper. Urban Outfitters always has the cutest stuff when it comes to home decor so I always look to them for inspiration and I'm really excited for today's projects and before we jump into it don't forget to like and subscribe down below. This first project is a macrame plant hanger and I've had my eye on it for quite a while now but the only problem is I waited so long that it is now sold out, but I am very confident that we can dupe it. So my plan is to use an embroidery hoop or a wooden hoop and then macrame, of course, as well as some tie dye or dye in general. And I think it's gonna give us the same look. So let's go ahead and jump into the first project. Hello from voiceover Tina. For our first DIY dupe, we're going to use a small embroidery hoop for the top of our hanger. And you can also use a wooden ring, but I'm just using what I had on hand and we're going to need the inner hoop for this project. We're gonna need eight pieces of macrame cording. So I'm cutting about 10 to 12 feet of the macrame rope. And to start, I'm taking the first strand and we're just gonna fold that in half and create a lark's head knot by pulling the ends through the loop. And you basically wanna repeat this loop with all eight strands at the top. Now we're creating rows of square knots across the top. So I'm taking four cords on the left and then we're going to take the right cord and create a backwards four. Then you wanna bring the left cord and put that on top and then put that through the hole in the four. Now you can pull up and this is gonna create the first half of our square knot. And to complete the knot, we're going to repeat the same exact steps, but this time we're gonna start with the left side to create the four and then bring the right cord over and through. So we're repeating these square knots across the top until we have four of those. And as a reminder, if you're a beginner to macrame cord, I would definitely suggest to go back and watch a basic knot video. These helped me so much, especially when I was starting out. But the best way to learn macrame is just to start it. So I would highly encourage you guys to just get out there and try it if you haven't already. So once we move on to a new row, we're basically gonna remove the two cords on both the left and the right side, and then you're gonna start your square knots from there. So basically we're creating an upside down triangle with the four rows at the top, and then we're tapering down to one. And I started many projects, including plant hangers and banners with this same exact design before. And this is just one of the most simple knots and designs that you can make with macrame. And once you get the hang of it, it goes by pretty quickly. So after we get down to the last square knot, we're gonna create two diagonal rows of double half hitch knots. And these are pretty simple to do. We are taking the cord on the far most left and then I'm gonna bring that over the cord on the right. So we're taking the cord on the right of it and this is going to create a four and then we're gonna pull the end through the loop. This essentially is wrapping around that left cord on top and you're basically gonna repeat this twice with each of the cords. So as you're moving along, you'll see that it's wrapping around and creating a nice diagonal line. We're going to repeat this on the other side, but this time we're going into the opposite direction. So we're gonna create a backwards four on this side. And in the end, this is gonna create a V shape and we're going to create two of these rows.
so this is how it's looking and it's very similar to projects that I've done in the past but what we're going to do next is moving a few inches down and we're going to repeat the V shapes again. So we're going to take that cord on the left and moving it across and downwards as we wrap the cords around it. And I found that the trickiest part about doing these is just making sure that the diagonals are as symmetrical as possible. And for my first time trying this, I think I did a pretty good job. And as you can see, once you have both sides done, you can basically connect them by taking the cord on the left and then the cord on the right and just creating more double half hitch knots. The original from Urban Outfitters has four of these V shapes to create a super long hanger, but I wanted mine to be a bit shorter, so I'm only doing two more of these rows, but feel free to do as many or as little as you'd like. I think the Urban Outfitters one is a bit smaller in scale too, so mine is a little bit larger and I think two is going to be perfect. All right, so now we're moving on to the little basket that our pot is actually going to sit in. So first I'm creating another square knot and this is gonna be a few inches down on both the left and the right side. So as you can see, we're taking the four cords on the left and we're gonna make a square knot and I'm repeating that on the right side at the same height. Now we're taking those two square knots and we're flipping them inwards. And then what we're going to do is basically create another square knot with the two cords from both sides. So now we have a front and this is where our plant pot is going to sit. Essentially, you can leave it like this, but I wanted it to be as close to the original as possible. So I'm going to create more of these diamond shapes with more square knots around the front and the back of our piece. And for me, this was a lot of trial and error, so I'm going to let this play out so you guys can see what I'm exactly doing. But essentially, I'm taking two cords from the adjacent square knots to create another square knot in between those two. So this is going to give us a pattern that creates this basket look. And I still feel like a beginner to macrame, so I try to explain these to you guys as best as I can. But as always, I think it's just best to go back to the basics. So I am going to link other tutorials down below with more in-depth explanations. But what I have learned about macrame is that once you understand how to create these basic knots, you can expand it and create so many designs. So for this project in particular, I did not watch any tutorials. I kind of just looked at the photo from Urban Outfitters and I was able to recreate it by putting my pot in and out and just creating more knots as I go to recreate the original design. As you become more comfortable with a specific type of medium, I think it's so great that you're able to just work on your own and create your own projects. And this was just so much fun for me to just work on the piece and figure it out as I went along. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. And to keep our pot in place, we're going to do a gathering wrap knot. So with another piece of macrame, I'm going to create a loop at the bottom and then we're placing that right up against the backside of our hanger. And from there, we're basically just wrapping it around all the strands until we get our desired length. And at this point, you can take the end of the macrame cord and feed it through that initial loop. And then we're going to pull through with the other end at the top. And this is going to give us a nice seamless knot. And with all the excess macrame at the bottom, I'm just going to snip it off so that it's all even. So you could stop this project right here, but this project calls for some dip dyeing, so I'm mixing up some colored dye, and I'm following the directions on the package. I added in salt and a bit of dish soap to some boiling hot water, and then I'm using the color emerald by RIT to create a nice deep green. I'm putting the bottom half of my piece into that dye, and this is going to be the most saturated portion. And then once I got to the first row of knots, I'm going to slowly add it in so that I get a nice even layer. So I'm letting it sit on the side of the bowl and with a little foam brush with some water, I'm going to dilute the very top of that dye because I wanted to create more of an ombre look. And the original piece has more of a blunt line, but I really wanted it to be a gradient. So this method worked really well to achieve that. And from there, I let the bottom part just sit in the dye for about 15 minutes and then we're gonna wash it out with some cold water and then you could just hang it up and let it air dry. I cannot even begin to tell you guys how much I love this project. It really challenged me to figure out how to recreate something without a set of instructions, and I'm very proud of how it came out. This is a great colorful twist on your typical plant hanger, and you can totally customize this with whatever colors you want to fit your personal style. 
So next up, we're gonna try and recreate this pillow right here. And as I was reading the description, I actually realized that it is a mini pillow. So it is quite small, but it is 30 bucks which I think is a little bit more on the pricey side for the size of the pillow. So for my project, we're going to use an Ikea pillow cover. And these are great because they're really inexpensive. And also the thing with throw pillows is that the more that you buy, the more that you need to have space to store them. So using a pillow cover like this is just so much more cost effective. And that way you can switch them in and out whenever you want to. This is definitely my favorite way to switch out pillows just because I love changing my decor all the time as you guys probably know. So for this pillow, we're going to do some punch needle work, which is going to be my first time ever. So please wish me luck and let's get into the project. For our next project, I busted out my punch needle kit and this has everything you need in it. I'll have it linked down below for you guys. And I actually bought it at the end of last year and this is my first project using it. So that kind of just shows you guys how intimidated I was to start. This kit comes with two different punch needles and one is your classic wooden handled one and then the other is a plastic adjustable one which allows you to extend the needle to create larger loops. I also got monk's cloth in 14 by 14 inches. This fabric has large holes in it and is made especially for punch needling and you can find it in larger sizes or even rolls of it. To stretch it out, I'm using an embroidery hoop and this is going to be perfect since my design is already a circle. You could also buy a punch needle frame or even DIY one of your own, especially if you're working on a large project. And once it's on the hoop, I'm making sure that I stretch it out even more by pulling the sides and tightening up the top. I went ahead and just freehand a yin yang design and you can also print out your design first and use that as a template. This design is pretty simple so I just went ahead and penciled it in first and then I darkened it with a permanent marker. With the long wire thread that comes in the kit, we're going to go ahead and put that through the top of the punch needle and thread it through the bottom. Then with our yarn, we're feeding that through the loop and then just pulling it all the way to the top. And lastly, we're going to need that wire again and we're just going to put that through the little hole in the needle and then string the yarn through as well. And something to keep in mind is to always have slack with your yarn, otherwise it's not going to punch correctly. So as I'm working, I'm making sure that I unwind my yarn skein to give it plenty of slack. All right, now it's time to get to punching. So when you punch through, you wanna make sure that the needle is gonna go all the way through the handle before you pull it back out. And since this yarn is a bit thinner, I'm making sure that I do these punches pretty closely together. So you basically just wanna repeat this step and punch in and out. And the monk's cloth is really gonna do all the work to keep the loops in place. And to start off, I'm actually just going to outline the entire shape. It also helped me a lot just to flip it back and forth occasionally to ensure that it was looking good. And the side that we're punching through is actually going to be the back side, and the front is where all the loops are. And the more I punched through it, the more I got the hang of it. I really just found it to be easier if I held it at an angle. And as you're working, you want to make sure that the tail end of the yarn is going to trail behind the direction you're moving. So you guys can see I'm going around the perimeter of this section and I'm filling it in as I went along. And punch needling is pretty forgiving, so if you mess up at all, you can definitely just pull it back out and start over. And there were quite a few times where I messed up a bit and you guys are definitely going to see some wonkiness in the punches that aren't even, but that is totally okay because we're going to fix those up later on. You guys are actually going to see that the other yarn that I used was a lot easier to work with since it was thicker. So if you're a beginner at punch needling, I would definitely recommend using a yarn that has some thickness to it. This green one that I'm using isn't super thin, so it's still doable. But when I worked with the other yarn, it was noticeably easier to get the punches in. So I've gone around and around and I'm leaving our little circle blank and all I'm going to do here at the end is to flip it over and I'm going to go ahead and fill in some of those empty spots that I might have missed the first time around. To finish off this section, I'm cutting off the yarn and I'm also going to cut off some of the larger loops to clean it up. Moving on to the other side, I'm using this speckled cream colored yarn and since this one is a bit thicker, I'm going to adjust the needle so it's a bit longer to create larger loops. And once again, we're just going to punch through the same exact way that we did on the other side. But with this one, I could space out my punches a little bit more since the loops are larger and the yarn is thicker. And like I mentioned, I did notice this one being so much easier to work with. So you're going to see that this side is a lot more even and I made a lot less mistakes. 
And since we're creating larger loops, this side actually took me less time to complete than the other side. Punch needling is definitely something that you want to do while watching a show or a movie. So as I was punching along, I was watching Black Widow again for a second time. And I also have been getting really into podcasts. So if you guys have one that you really like, please let me know some of your recommendations down below. So as you guys can see, this side had no major mistakes, so I did not have to clean any of it up. And then lastly, I went ahead and filled in the circles. So we're just gonna fill those in with the opposite colors. And even though the green yarn was a bit harder to work with, I was really happy with this color combo. To keep it all in place, I'm using fabric glue with a foam brush and I made sure to saturate it in areas with the larger loops and the looser ends. And the fabric glue that I'm using takes only two to four hours to dry and is washable after 48 hours. I'm then going to cut out our design as close to the pattern as possible. And this way you won't be able to see the monk's cloth underneath after the step. And finally, I'm putting a piece of cardboard into our pillowcase just to protect the other side. And we're just gonna fabric glue this right onto the pillowcase. And once that's dry, you can go ahead and pop in a pillow insert and our new pillow is ready to go. And there we have it guys, my first punch needle project. I am loving this design and it was so much fun just being able to customize this to exactly how I wanted it based on that original piece. And after trying this out, I definitely want to make more punch needling projects. So let me know in the comments what you guys would like to see me punch needle next. Those projects were so much fun and I hope you guys enjoyed DIYing them with me. I would love to know in the comments down below which project was your favorite. I think definitely the punch needle one is up there because it was my first time trying it and it was so much fun. I'm very excited to do other things with it because I know people make rugs with it, but I also thought it'd be cool to make like a cushion cover for an ottoman or something like that. So hopefully I can get to that in the future. And if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up down below. And a huge shout out to you guys who continue to tag me over on Instagram on your projects. It makes me so happy whenever I see them. So here are a few of your recreations. And if you guys are inspired by any of the projects from today's video, make sure that you tag me over there as well. So that's really it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and hanging out with me today. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.